Good. Okay. Okay, call the order for the December meeting with the High Point Regional High School Board of Ed. Please stand for the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Open public meetings act statement. New Jersey open public meetings law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interest is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of the act, the Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, and place thereof posted at the Augusta, Branchville, and Sussex post offices and notice sent to the New Jersey Herald, the advertiser North and South, and the clerk of the boroughs of Branchville and Sussex. The township townships of Frankfurt, Lafayette, and Orange. Our mission statement: <clears throat> High Point Regional High School, in partnership with staff, family, and community, is dedicated to the quest for individual excellence. By fostering high standards of achievement, we prepare students to become responsible and productive members of a diverse society. Can I have the roll call? Mrs. Anderson here. Ms. Nugent here. Mrs. Schumann? Here. Mr. Carraga? Here. Ms. Smith? Here. Ms. Dodona? Here. Mr. Kleinman, I expect to be coming in a little bit. Mr. Arno? Here. Mr. Dunn? Here. We have a quorum also present, Dr. Ripley? Here. Myself and Ms. Sergeant DC. I don't know if you see. Awesome. We have a special presentation. Ms. Valerie Dolan from the Espaccio will present uh, in review of the June 30th, 2021 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report to the Board of Education. Will we everybody get a copy? I've got this lovely, beautiful book. <laughs> it's your year book. <laughs> um, just once again, it was a pleasure to finish do the audit for the school district. Um, the finance office and is in great shape. They're very well prepared for us. You may come in, they're able to give us everything we need and get us get through an audit very tough. Um, hopefully, so. hopefully without too much interruption on the business office, but we can complete our lot of our information. Um, one of the key things we always say when we're coming to do an audit is really based on the number of journal entries that we do. If we make an awful lot of journal entries, that means we're constantly changing the numbers. Our journal entries that we make for the district are very limited, which means the financial statements that you have preliminarily all year long are starting our sound financial reports, which you get a lot of your decisions based upon. Um, just to give you a little bit of a refresher, if you all have your books in front of you, you have your large big blue book, which is your capper. It's presented in four sections in my book. There's a small little introductory section, which just kind of gives you some information about the district itself, some advisors, your organizational part of that nature. The larger section will report your financial information, which includes our opinion and management discussion and analysis, and all of the notes of the financial statements. The third section is the statistical section, which is related to the J's. Um, that's actually a very informative section. That's 10 years comparative data. So we give you 10 years of information on finances, 10 years of information on enrollment, full time equivalents, gives you information about all those sending districts, gives you information about the finance assessments. It's a very useful section. And then lastly, there's a single audit section. Which goes through all your compliance with all the federal grant funding that you receive. Secondary, there's a small grant book, which is my report, that's my report to the board, all of the things that I've tested while I've done, and report back to the board on any issues and areas that I might have. That being said, it's a very large book. We turn it to 10 pages that are probably of this whole big blue book that are 10 important pages. It just, you know, um, it's, if you want to follow along, it starts on about page 82 and runs till about 92. Um, that is your C1. That C1 schedule is your budget. It shows you all of your revenue and where they came in your projections, all of your expenses by line item, and walks you through all the charges and what's unspent on each individual line item that you budget. And you went through that whole process. To start with where you started at the beginning of the year and we end with where we just ended what we refer to as fund balance in school district. And so you ended your fund balance picture with a little over $3.9 million. That being said, that fund balance is then categorized into various components. About 850000 of that original amount is encumbrances for which goods and services haven't been finished before the end of my June 30th year. 
and will be carried into the budget you're paying currently. An additional $10,000 of your own surplus that you anticipated given the budget that you're currently in for 21-22. Then you can set aside some reserves. You have money in a capital reserve and a maintenance reserve. Capital reserve can be used for any capital um, expenditures of the district and or for any offsetting of local share of capital. Um, you were able to put an additional $500,000 based on a resolution you did in June, bringing your capital reserve to a little over $1.2 million. You also were able to put about $350,000 into that maintenance reserve. That maintenance reserve was almost completely depleted before this year, and now you're almost just back up a little over 350. That has been used, used to supplement your maintenance budget and any maintenance costs. That being said, that leaves us with about $960,000, which is your available fund balance that you're statutorily allowed to hold by the state of New Jersey. For the next two years, that's actually a higher number than it ever has been before. Previous to this year, that amount was only allowed to be at 2% of your budget. The state changed the rules for two years and made that allow districts to hold 4%. And the reason they're giving you that extra feedback is so that anything with the pandemic, additional costs, additional closures, when we go down above the road again, coming into the holiday season, that money they left with districts so that you could use it if need be. And as all that number was taken about, then it leaves me with what I refer to as the excess. That excess surplus is just a little bit over a half a million dollars. That's your seed money that will start your building of your 22 budget that you've been working on. That money will go into that budget. Our advice has always been if you're using that money to use it for one time expenditures because it's not a reoccurring number. It's a number that gives you a little bit of flexibility for something you want to do in the district, but it, the likelihood of reoccurring isn't something you should rely So we always say one time expenditure. Um, a little bit of other information. The district received about $500,000 worth of federal, state, and local grants, um, and it's continuing to receive even more just as the ESSER funds, uh, COVID funding is coming. Um, your transportation enterprise fund saw an increase of about $21,000 this year. And your lunch program, on the other hand, saw a decrease of about $17,000. That's consistent. We're seeing, as we're providing meals to all of these students, your expenses are barely breaking even. At this point, you're actually down. It's the second year in a row that you've actually had a decline on the surplus of the lunch program. And you landed your end of the year with only ninety thousand dollars in one time, which means if you continue on that path, it's possible that the general fund might have to help have your lunch program unless we could get lunches back to operational sales coming through the door. That's a whole thing. Um, as I said, my report we came in and things were in great shape, and it's a clean up. I have no formal recommendations and no corrective action needs to be taken. So kudos to your business office for coming out with a clean report. Um, as we've always done in previous years, one of the things we like to do is give you suggestions to manage things that we feel are coming down the pipe that could be future impacts. Um, one of them is an accounting standard. We've got 87, or GASB 87 is leases. We're going to have to take a deep dive to every lease that the district has. And in terms of leases, we're not just referring to copiers and buses. We're talking about the mail machines. We're talking about any monthly reoccurring expenses you need to, I have to review them to make sure that they are being accounted for properly. Um, as I said earlier, there's a lot of federal funding coming in right now, a lot of money in the ESSER funds um, and securing our acts. There's a lot of funding, and when it comes with a lot of funding, it comes a lot of people with it. So, what we're suggesting is dot every I, cross every T. Of every every dollar that you spend, so that if one of the outside agencies, other than myself, come in and review those grants, they won't have any problems. The other advice that we're giving districts is if you relied on any type of guidance to make your decision, you got in there with it. Because we're finding that that guidance is changing on the fly. They're making rules, they're changing the rules. And I wouldn't want anyone to get caught in a situation where you relied on guidance early on and spent your money one way and then the rules change. At least document. And then lastly, the other area is compensated absences. It wasn't that you're approved saving vacation liabilities for um, unspent time. It's not such a big deal in the school districts, but the local municipalities all were reviewed by the comptroller. There were some big issues with some of them not being in accordance with the state rules. So, what we're advising is just take a step back, have your labor attorney look at your contracts so that if they were to come in and look at the schools, 
once again, know that those contracts we have either that or Boston, and we won't have it. I'd love to answer any questions if anyone has them, but all in all, it's a great audit and they're in good shape. Thanks, you, Jeff. Thank you, Rob. Dan and Dawn have it down to a well oiled machine, and I, I get to accept the accolades of Fran and Dawn, their experience and their diligence in what they do really has supported this school. And I hope that I help, but the majority no, of this really is their, their accomplishment. Thank you. Thank you. Are, are, Valerie, are you finding other schools other uh, in the same situation where they're ending up with surpluses to, yes. because of the COVID situation? Yeah, because of the COVID situation, we're seeing surpluses. People are actually seeing them all over the place. You know, some districts used to be in an area where we'd be consistently seeing everybody hitting their marks. Um, in Sussex County, we're seeing between the cuts. That everyone's been facing, we're seeing there's such a rollback. But then expense, expenses sort of with the pandemic, everyone sort of had stopped, only spent what they needed. We've seen a little bit of regeneration on those, some of those districts, but I don't know if it will reoccur once once districts are back in full when this pandemic sort of ends and we get back to spending as usual. Where do we see where the cuts are going to go? So if you're right. if you've lost in state aid. Having some money set aside is a good thing so that hopefully, I mean, it's still going to be difficult. You're still slated to lose a lot more money as most of the families. Which is making it very tough to build budgets. So every little bit does help. Uh, that's why I appreciate the advice that the uh, the excess only be applied to one time things because this is a one time event. Well, we hope so. <laughs> you won't see that. You haven't seen excess surpluses. In fact, if you were to look at that statistical section that I had said, it was a decline. Yeah. And it was a well, you have been on a long steady decline. And the pandemic sort of has helped you write a little bit, but I don't know if we're still like to the point where I'm saying we're level in the sweet spot yet. Yeah. And it's hard to judge to see where you're at and where you're at in this year. Every day, it's like if we've pivoted four times in the last two years on what every district is doing, what's worked, what's not worked. Our middle school were closed again for the month of January, and so it only adds to a lot of concerns. So, we're, we're very pleased we're able to put what we can into the capital uh, fund and the maintenance fund. Right. That's and remember, my numbers are as of June, so if anything has occurred in those reserves during this current year, that's out. My numbers are higher than what you might have done. Something has come out of the game. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very merry, happy. Watch those those appear. Oh um, yes. They're all sorts Thank you, Joyce. Have a great holiday, honey. So we all have a good I will look for. I will look that up. I have it. Right. I will subscribe my welcome. I like that. Okay. We now will have a motion made to. Uh, the High Point Regional High School Board of Ed enter executive session to provide an update on negotiations, legal, and personnel items which are exempt from public participation pursuant to New Jersey Public Law 1975, Chapter 231 of the Public Meetings Act. Any discussions held by the board which need not remain confidential will be made public when appropriate. Minutes of the executive session will not be disclosed until the need for confidentiality no longer exists. The board will reconvene in public session. Virtually and in person at the conclusion of the executive session. It is not anticipated that any action will be taken as we expect that meeting to be about 7 p.m. Uh, so moved. Second. Third. Wonderful. I have a no. feeling I know who's going to be moving and seconding. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? I'm the executive. A motion to return to public session. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 
Seeing none, we are in public session. Uh, proceeding with the agenda. Uh, next up is unfinished business. We have none. Uh, and that is approval of minutes. Uh, Ms. Pelton. We have um, regular minutes in the executive session and for November 16, 2021. Um, for both parts of that meeting, we have full board in attendance. Right. We um, our standard business, um, including the minutes for October, which were approved. We did have an amendment to the regular minutes. We had um, the report from the principal, Mr. Salome, Director of Curriculum and Instruction, Mr. Campbell, HCA President, Ms. Mulkey, Council Speaker of the House, oh my God, Ms. Pocotaro, Taro, I will get it, I promise. Uh, we had our monthly financial reports, transportation action. Um, there were several personnel items. We had review policy 2425. Um, and that meeting, that's about all that was completed uh, on that meeting. The executive session of the same day, uh, the items that were discussed in the executive session are not yet available for the school year um, for the public. Okay. So may I have a motion to accept uh, and approve the minutes from the regular session and executive session of November 15, 2021? Motion. Second. Uh, I guess we do roll call, please. Uh -huh. Ms. Sedona? Yes. Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Ms. Nugent? Yes. Mrs. Schumann? Yes. Mr. Peraza? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Done? Yes. Motion's carried. Uh, next, we have our first public comments section of the evening. Uh, this is on uh, agenda items only. So, in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, we will open the public comments for agenda items only at this time. Each speaker should state his or her name and address. You will have three minutes to address the board, which will be timed by myself. We will limit this section to no longer than 45 minutes. Please be respectful and mindful that your comments are being recorded. So <clears throat> if anybody uh, in attendance here would like to make comments, you may step to the podium. Uh, we also have the option of making comments via our virtual platform, and we'll monitor that after any comments in person here. Doesn't appear to be any here. Hey, uh, we happen to have anybody online. If you're online, you want to make a comment? I believe you got to raise your hand, virtual hand. None? Okay. I have a motion to close the first public comments section. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right. There is. Uh, Another opportunity for public comments, uh, not limited to agenda items later on in the evening. So, okay. Oh, very good. Uh, so, next we're going to proceed uh, with our presentations for the evening. Uh, first presentation Dr. Ripley is going to present service plaques to the High Point Regional High School board members. We'll be leaving the board in January, or actually effective December 31st, I believe. Thank you to Miss Deborah Anderson representing Ranchville and Miss Patricia Nugent representing Lafayette for your commitments to the High Point Regional School District. And I'll let you take it over first. No, we have a uh, plaque thanking you for all of your service, and it has been fabulous having you here. We hope that it has in some capacity been a blessing to you because you have blessed your community and the district and, and, and us here at High Point by your having participated and been such an asset for us. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't want everyone to know when they look at this and say, that one's bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Anderson has been a part of High Point history before the walls went up. And uh, as a little girl ran through the, the unfinished hallways, and that was in 
sometime. <laughs> Love that. And uh, someone who has been a part of High Point history, I refer to it as the mother of High Point, the, uh, the lady of High Point. And, uh, you know, a, a, a student, a, a, a daughter of teachers, of original, staff original staff members who married an alumnus whose uh, in-laws were employed here. And she came, graduated, and came back as a teacher for a no, long yes, time. No, yeah. And then uh, she served as the HPEA president for several years, and then came back as a board member now for nine years. And that is one heck of a commitment to one institution. That's a lifetime commitment, hence the, uh, the slightly larger. Um, <laughs> It's it's merely a, I'm sorry I'm standing in the way merely a plaque but it does not uh, for either of you but uh, Ms. Anderson your dedication your commitment and your impact on High Point cannot be mitigated and it is profound long lasting and I personally have benefited from that relationship and I could not tell you that say that I could not hold you in higher esteem. You have been a blessing to this institution. It would not be what it is if it was not for Deborah Lutz Anderson. Thank you so much for nine years for the support, the battles, the victories, the losses, and the dignity. Thank you. Thomas Joe, I'm not going to talk too long because he's a golf club back in the game. But I want to say to the public, you guys all know, I, I blabber all the time, to the public, that being on the Board of Education has been like a great experience, a learning experience. There's an amazing service that you provide because of the, the teamwork that happens here. A, a labor of love. A pleasure at times, horrible at times, um, the battles to, to do good for our students. And we, it is about making sure that the students in this school get the best, get the best that we can possibly offer. It's not making sure that your next door neighbor is happy with you. It's making sure that you guys get what you need from being in this institution. And as Scott Ripley has pointed out, I've been running around this place since 1966. So, I, I know how great it is. I know how great it can continue to be. I know the iterations, how it's changed and, and what's come along and what's left. And we are so dedicated. This group of board members is amazing. They work very hard together. They do good things together. We are going in good places. We constantly work for that. And I want this community to know that your, your students are in good hands. So. Thanks for letting me be a part of this. And I never said amazing once, did I? Yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make you a chance to elaborate on this a little bit later, but I just want to uh, recognize both of you for the amount of effort that you put in in committee meetings and beyond the public facing portion of what you do. I know personally how much time you both put in this past year. So it, it may have been your last year, but you worked as hard as ever. Debbie and Patty the same. Um, I, I can't count the hours that you've put in on the negotiations committee on uh, all of the other committees, but particularly the negotiations was exceptionally busy this year. And it's your hard work that's helped the board. And I believe we have been a productive and cohesive board more so than in my memory. Um, we're sorry to see that. You're going to do well. You're going to do well. It'll be fine. It's been a pleasure working with this board yep. and administration. Uh, okay, so I guess we'll, we'll try to continue through our presentations. Uh, we have um, Eagle Scout Luke Malone, the senior, is going to present uh, his Eagle Scout project proposal. Oh, we even have presentation. Nice. Awesome. So, 
Dữ quá. And I'm here to present my project to you all for the benefit of the high point textual project. Then. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Put it right down here. Sure, it's on the Just look at Mr. Young, like next. Okay, right. Such as props, drum meter stands, and tractor, the battery, and then there are a number of cards as well as. Other items they might have. I don't know if you've seen the van department, but it's all very cluttered. And with that shed, we'll be able to free it up and they don't have to worry about not having enough space for anything. As you can see, the image left, there's me holding my face with the sun in my red sweatshirt, my bed in the corner. This is the uh, location that I spoke about with the Williams Committee last week. And they actually approved the location as it is located between the softball field, senior parking lot, that little parish. Area is nice and flat, no really any dips, solid. And it's also near where the uh, marching band practices in the softball field. Benefits, I've stated before that it will free up space in the band department. It will also reduce the need to pull all the equipment down from the main building to the softball field or in terms of games to the football field. Because I, I, I've been there for seeing myself, I've been the marching band for almost a year. Some of the stuff is just so heavy and they just gotta lug it all down. But Equipment will be easily accessible from that area on that little patch of softball field because when they just need to go down for practice, we just head on down, open it up, go on to the field, and be able to have it ready to go to my player. Same with games, a little bit farther, but once they open it, they only have to bring it across the parking lot, which is not too much of a hassle like bringing down that whole curve. Also, a secure space. All the equipment because I know there was an incident a few years back where uh, it was the trailer that was stolen from the van. The shed just put a lock on it, nobody's getting in there even if they wanted to. Thank you, Ryan. My time frame for this project is hopefully to begin fundraising by the end of December. Now, I hope you all know sheds ain't cheap, <laughs> but um. Just getting that fundraising as soon as possible, we'll have the money, hopefully, in a uh, good amount of time, to be able to use that for the shed. And any of Because March is when everything starts falling out, ground's not punchy like it is now, a bit slippery, so good time to start. And I hope to anticipate project completion by April. On a good day, I'm <laughs> joking. 
I have for the bid. I'll be happy to answer any questions if anybody has. Any questions from the board? When Luke presented this to us in committee, it was we did have a lot of questions then. We're talking about when the what type of fundraising possibly, um, a couple other things. And he, he said he's working on it with the band um booster club. I guess that's a good best way to put it. I forget the name. And yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm with you on that. And we were very happy to talk to them, right, Rich? It was it was pleasant to have him on our Zoom meeting, and it's pleasant to have you here. And we think it's a, a great project. And the fact that you're gonna make more money than you need and donate that to the man, that's awesome too. So we can applaud all of it. I wonder how come somebody hasn't thought of this sooner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a couple of points here. Number one is the Eagle Scale project, which I think is commendable. Yes. For, uh, and another point that he brought up and kind of just rushed over was. He was in marching band, no longer in it, but he's giving back to marching band. Give me a little time now to get back to him. Really nice. Right? Very nice. Also, Rich, you were very impressed with his timeline. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Compared to other things that have been done with buildings and grounds. <laughs> That's easy one to ground some oil tanks as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you. So we're going to uh, make a slight diversion on our agenda to an action item um, for um, the long benefit. We're going to move the buildings and grounds install action item. I can turn that over to you. Sure, it's on page 11. Um, it is recommended by the superintendent that the board approve the Eagle Scout project, building and erecting a shed for the necessary purpose of storing band equipment and other equipment proposed by Luke Malone. There is no cost to the district. I'm moving that. I need a second. Second. Any more conversation or discussion? Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, roll call. Mr. Klein? Yes. Ms. Tadona? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Peraza? Yes. Mrs. Schumann? Yes. Ms. Nugent? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Congratulations, motion carries. Good job. Looking forward to uh, hearing about it at the end of the school year. So don't feel obligated to stay for the rest of the uh, meeting. <laughs> <laughs> we won't be far away on you. We would leave. If you don't take advantage of it now, you may lament that. <laughs> I like, yeah. I'm 17, so I definitely yeah. would. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're going to return to our presentations for the evening. Uh, next up is our student council um, presentation. Ariana Kojikaro, speaking of the House will update board on activities of the student council. Again, I apologize for trying to say it faster. I will promise you. No one gets it. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, okay. Uh, the whole way that grading was a success, and seeing your class came out as the victors this year. The December Spear Week is currently in progress, and we're looking forward to pajama day. And had and on Monday it was ugly sweater day. Um, student Council is currently in the progress of planning our character initiative for January, February, and March, which respectfully will be January will be represent respect, February will be compassion, and March will be positivity. Thank you. Thanks again. Thanks for coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next presentation. Uh, HBEA, Ms. Carla Mancuso, HBEA President, update the board on any HBEA items. 
Good evening, Dr. Ripley, and what a bit. Uh, it's been interesting for all of us, uh, students, staff, admin, constantly being able to turn on a dime, uh, teaching with masks on, and dealing with students that are remote as well as in person. Didn't think we had to go back that way. Um, very interesting. Um, I think the HPA concerns and as and some of the students have been coming up to the HPA personnel saying, you know, what's going to happen after Christmas? You know, when we come back. So we would as HPA members, we have concerns for some of us have elder care. have a voice and if there aren't any plans out there if, if we should have to go remote um, otherwise we are working all together as a team trying to communicate and uh, as you know in the regular public <laughs> and in with us it's it's stressful very stressful but we're working together and uh, hoping things get better and are fully aware that supposedly January is going to be the peak this this way, but who knows? Nobody knows. I don't know. I would like to thank Mrs. Anderson and Ms. Nugent for their service. And um, we do have a parting yes. tips, uh, which were not bought by the HPA, so I didn't have to do three bids. <laughs> <laughs> But we do appreciate all of your service. This is a thankless job that you folks do. And uh, you have your own lives and, and they come and support all of us. And we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next report is the principal's report and the athletics report, Mr. John Alamek. Good evening, everybody. I want to make sure you can see me up here, Joe. Is good? See me right? Yeah. So I just wanted to celebrate, as everyone just said, we, we've had a spirit week this week, and, and I don't want the board to be left out. We did have another newsletter, also known as Nice Jacket Day. I'm going to break it out on time here. It's got a time matches. Um, it also was white out day today, so I had to wear a white shirt in honor of that. So we got to do a great job with that. We're very appreciative of having some holiday spirit as we come up across this this last uh, week um, as well. As well, Thank you, Mrs. Anderson, Mrs. Nugent, for your service um, for all the many years combined. Um, in, in different capacities, very appreciative of that administration working with you on a regular basis. Well, thank you, and we wish you best in retirement um, and to go to the, the next chapter and uh, move, move forward. I want to thank uh, Luke for sitting behind me and his family for being here. Um, there's a lot of proud moments as a principal. Um, it's a lot of blessings that we get to be part of um, in education. There's very few that are more proud than we see in Eagle Scout um, working on their presentation as Mr. Pines said before, the dedication to the High Point community, the marching band program. And Luke sincerely said from his heart, I want to give back. Um, you know, so that aspect of it, and if you ever get a chance to see an Eagle Scout um, or Gold Award um, ceremony, it's something that's second to none. Um, it's pretty amazing. We have had several of uh, Eagle Scouts and Gold Award recipients through High Point history. Um, I just want to say, very proud of you, uh, Luke, for that card, and we're here to help. Moving on to a couple other things. Uh, we have had a lot of activity by our chamber singers. As a matter of fact, right now, they're at Polka Manor finishing their tour. Um, we call it the, the community tour. The chamber singers are, are back on the road. Uh, we haven't had that opportunity for uh, a couple of years. Things that are going on. Mrs. Ricardi, Mrs. Martin, lead that charge. They're phenomenal. I've had uh, a chance to be one of those. Uh, what do they call it? Who's the on the band and kind of be part of it? Um, I've seen them in many opportunities. They've been at um, the New Rotary, the Branch Rotary, the Walkdale Valley Rotary, um, the Branch Presbyterian Church, the Sussex Presbyterian Church, Colfield Manor, Wine Street Lake. I think that's all of them um, in the past week and a half. So talking about being out in the community, every time I go and get a chance to be there with the students, um, we had last week was uh, the uh, Walter Valley Rotary, 
Um, and they say the same thing every time. It's amazing to be part of this. It's amazing to hear you sing. They sing for 20 or 30 minutes with those groups. Um, and our students are very proud, and the community members are very proud to, to see them. So kudos to them for, for doing that. We also have, um, this year a little bit different, WSUS also does a um, promotion for marching band and also for our jazz band and our, and our chamber singers. They should have to do a little bit of virtual because of all the things that are going on. Um, but that was again on, on the radio um, weeks ago from the WSUS. So kudos to Mrs. Ricardo and also Mrs. Martin for leading that. It's really, really important. Um, great for our kids to be out in the community again after a long 22 months. Uh, eighth grade open house, tentative date for that we're looking at is January 18th. Um, Evan Flo, as we said, things change on a dime, things change every day. That's the goal that we're looking at, um, having that set. Um, eighth grade tours, which we and eighth graders come into the building, um, will be on half days that we have, and then the 25th and 26th, again, tentative. Ready to move if we have to, um, and do whatever we have to along, along the line. We come back the second March period ends on the 24th. All that happened fast, happened fast after the holiday break. Um, we're excited to, to, to work towards um, that aspect of it. Hard to believe that we're even talking about the second March period ending and, and mid, mid year um, aspect of it. Some staff acknowledgements, student acknowledgements, if I could just real quick. Um, Aaron Myers, congratulations to some of our students. You may have saw this before, or maybe you're familiar with the Grateful Shed, um, which is in uh, Branchville. From your stomping grounds, I've seen that before. Um, Brianna Dunn, Hester Schweinberg, and Kylie um, Donofrio created a sign for the Grateful Shed um, and painted the mural that was part of that. So our students were selected to be active and again, giving back to the community, giving back to the towns and the community. Uh, congratulations to Mrs. Myers and those students for that aspect of it. I'm also about uh, Kelly Sheenice, one of our, our fine art teachers and also photography teachers. One of her students, Captain Weiss, was recently chosen for the Drexel High School Photography Award um, in the competition, which is a pretty prestigious award. I saw the captain actually yesterday. She's excited because hopefully they're going to have a nice ceremony and down in January. Um, down in Drexel, where they invite the students um, in for different capacities and have a nice ceremony for them. We had that a couple years ago for one of our students. Um, it was really a great event for them because they, they need a lot of professionals. I want to feel a chance to network and be recognized for what they do. So um, congratulations to, to both of them and the students as well. Uh, we had our Governor Educator of the Year uh, recipients acknowledged. That was uh, Mr. Carl Hansel. One of our health and education teachers uh, was a pretty cool experience to go be able to see and survive him in his room, which was the West Gym, um, during his archery class. Mr. Cameron and a couple others were there as well, and we surprised him with the students there, which is one of the most important things we like to do. Last year it wasn't that way, of course, because it was virtually surprised by the house. Um, that was pretty, uh, pretty emotional, pretty uh, well deserved for an individual that's been here for a long period of time. Also, we, as part of that, is also selected a um, education support professional of the year, um, and that was Joanne Cox. Um, same thing, Mrs. Cox actually was doing a presentation in the classroom um, about uh, college admissions and, and uh, so forth and so on. We surprised her, which is not what we need to do. And Mrs. Cox, um, and we actually, she was speechless for a few minutes, well, a few seconds maybe, um, which is also not even doing Mrs. Cox. So, congratulations to uh, Mrs. Cox and also Mr. Hensel for that aspect of it. A couple of things that happen a lot during the holidays that I want to make sure that don't get missed. Um, Mrs. Uh, Sullivan, one of our uh, child study. Team members always leads the charge with our Thanksgiving donations to the community. Um, historically, we've done Thanksgiving baskets, and we've all donated to those baskets um, for families that are in need. Uh, this year, a little bit different again with things that are going on. Um, she did Thanksgiving donations that all the staff members and community members um, donated to, so she was able to distribute those donations to families that were in need, and also to directly to the food pantries themselves, um, because they said this is the need that we have. We wanted to provide them to support. So thank you to all for doing that. Again, things that happen all the time behind the scenes that don't always get shut up in rooftops, important aspect. But also, Mrs. Schaefer, um, every year she helps uh, families in need in our community, and our school community, and our broader community. Um, and she organizes that and recognizes, which I think was probably six or seven different families um, that she coordinates with confidentially with, and they, they need gifts, they need presents for Christmas. Um, and then she'll give us a list of the staff. We circulate that around, and the staff buys um, gifts for them. Anonymously and, and, and donate them as well. So there's a lot of things that happen again out of the goodwill. She also coordinates the Toys for Tots, which is a, another initiative um, in, in the community that we have. So, High Point Food Pantry, utilized every day, regularly. Again, sometimes you don't always hear about it, um, but it is consistent. Um, and it is something that's there for, for our students every single day. So we're very um, happy to have her leading that. We have a group of students that are part of that as well. I actually was able to do a virtual meeting with a couple of first students and Mrs. Fyatt uh, about a month ago with other students from across the country that were focusing on the same thing, um, focusing on the need of, of food, on um, the basic need of food for, for students, uh, a good experience for them as well. Um, and definitely not last but not least, the school climate team 
uh, Mrs. Sarno and many members of the team um, and students that continue to work to uh, develop better climate overall, working with and collaborating with us overall. We're excited about some of the things that they have and they're planning for in January to come back um, as well. Certainly, last but not least, we had some delicious treats that were delivered to uh, the school. I'm not going to mention the elf, I think it looked a lot like Mrs. Anderson and Mrs. Nugent. Uh, <laughs> I'm delivering some cookies to everybody, so thank you to the board um, for that. They def definitely never go unnoticed. I know we are um, in, the, in the past when things get back to normal, we'll be able to celebrate together. Um, but that was a really nice thing. I heard, if I heard it one time, I heard it 10 times. Man, these cookies are really good. Um, you know, so that was a good thing. Yellow again. cottage, yellow cottage. Right? That's right. Yellow cottage. Um, so that was, that was really good as, as well. Any questions on that before I shift over to athletics? Is it okay with that? I shift over to athletics? Okay, so Mr. Dash, report here. Um, I'm going to go through this kind of quickly because I know we got a lot to cover, but athletics, all these success, we had 35 student athletes. 35 student athletes that were selected for athletic, all these success. Athletic, academically, we had 27 students that were selected for um, that as, as well. So we're very excited about that. Our pass it along scholar athlete nominee is Hannah Doyle. Um, Hannah is a um, all star in many capacities, and several different um, aspects of that um, are not just what she does on the, the hard work for basketball, volleyball, okay, other events, but also what she does in the classroom, who she is as an individual. So we're excited about that. And we had some recent signings you may have seen if you follow along on social media. And you see the, the recent signings um, Brian Saldana for Rutgers and Sarah Hines for Siena. We actually did that together. Um, out front, we had a nice day, we were able to go up front, which was nice with the mask and, and do those things and that was a nice picture that we sent out as well. A uh, winter sports update. Um, we have, have many participants going through. We're as Mr. Cooper said we're working through the challenges that happen to every school. Um, and we're not immune to that obviously we're working through that aspect of it. And athletes of the week for December fourth through eighth, Ellie Barron for Jillian and for swimming. And that is the athletic report. Any questions or comments? Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Um, Next report uh, presentation is uh, curriculum instruction. Thank you. I was with the Navy tonight and uh, didn't have any points at the Makuto to Mr. Tom. I always uh, wrap in with a lot of spirit. Mrs. Anderson, I cannot believe this is the last night that I will stand before you and uh, and present. So thank you for to. Um, Newton and to Mr. Anderson for your dedication and your friendship and, and your service. So, and congratulations to Luke. Uh, very proud of you and, and glad that you're here this evening. How are you doing, Mr. Gardley? Okay. Tomorrow is the last day we're saying goodbye to board members, but tomorrow we bid farewell to someone who has had a tremendous impact on our school in recent weeks when they announced that mr walton was going to be up next to the dunk tank there were about 375 students in the cafeteria uh no one got hurt but they sprinted like a uh, a man stampede to get out and dunk him because truly they love him he is forceful and bold and held them accountable he built tremendous relationships with our students uh they really took to him and um I also, I have to embarrass him a little bit. Uh, he began his career down the road at Walk Hill and met the cheerleading, the basketball coach and the cheerleading coach uh, went out on a, on a date and they've been together ever since. And they will of course be leaving together as Wildcats. So thank you to Mr. Walton. Um, and it's just real, real pleasure to have had him. As um, Mr. Talamay mentioned, we honor two esteemed uh, long-term educators. I think Mr. Hensel's a little bit choked up there as, uh, as he should be, and Mrs. Koch. And now for the program of studies. I want to thank our teachers and our supervisors. We have an incredible program of studies. If you go on and you look at our program of study, you'll notice that it is in a format that is user friendly, it's a lot of graphics, it's very impressive the way we lay out our world class curriculum. I get to stand here tonight, but the work of our curriculum is primarily that of our academic supervisors. So the A team is not just a great show from the 80s. Uh, it is the four people that uh, that I work with to put together our standout curriculum. Next year, we will not have significant changes to our graduation requirements. We require 135 credits to graduate. 
the state requires 120. Now I want to thank our guidance counselors and our case managers for being so adept at identifying at-risk students, particularly during the pandemic, and allowing some of our students to graduate with less than 135, but more than 120. It has not been done often, but I believe that they have used appropriate flexibility and compassion to triage difficult situations and allow students to graduate on occasion below 135, which still meets the state requirement. One change next year is our science classes will be five credits rather than six. So the requirement for science will be 15 credits rather than 18. Next year will be the third year that we are uh, having our science labs occur within the standard amount of instructional time, which for us is now 57 minutes. We believe that 57 minutes is an appropriate amount of time to um, engage in a meaningful manner in science labs. I want to thank our science teachers for the adjustment they've made in keeping those labs meaningful and, and effective. And we're looking forward to continuing with this practice for next year. The most significant change in the course catalog is that we are going to have a, um, a condensing of levels for our incoming uh, freshman and core academic courses. This current year, we narrow the level of courses in math. Next year, we will do so in science, social studies, and English. So college prep B will not be an option next year for English 9, world history, and biology. The reasons, to, to sum them up briefly, a fresh start, a new school. One of the great things about high school, these students come to us from primarily four setting districts, and it's, it's newer to them than uh, ninth grade is in some districts. And we believe this will foster a sense of a fresh start and a chance to uh, perhaps meet potential that had not been met in middle school. Tracking works against a student's uh, self-efficacy. There are times where levels are needed. We believe that uh, lessening them will help students to uh, embrace their potential. There is a troubling correlation historically, nationally, between academic levels and socioeconomic status. And we're looking forward to a ninth grade team of teachers that work together, particularly in these three subjects, to support these students. And speaking of supports, modest class size, professional development, common planning time, tutoring, support instruction classes, um, and some scrutiny into how we move kids into the uh, honors level. That's a, a, a big move, and we have a lot of plans uh, underway to support those teachers um, and to be fully prepared for that change. We have some new math classes, mathematical ideas to support the math behind computer science. We need an algebra course that can give the students that are determined to go to a four-year college but are just not strong enough for algebra two, a math class you need for most four-year colleges. Um, technical math is my favorite subject up there. We are going to teach a math class in the tech labs, in say construction and manufacturing. And the whole focus of the class will be applying math skills to um, the building a shed. And what type of math principles? A basic project that people in the trades or, or in construction or manufacturing would do. So teaching math in the shop is going to be uh, have a lot of relevance and we're excited about that. Cybersecurity has been around, it's moving back to math, and there'll be a strong math component to it. Three of our AP courses, we want to um, narrow the focus and allow students to not have to take two tests per AP course but just take one, and I'll show you this here. Calculus A, B, and B, C. We truly believe that um, students should take Calculus A, B prior to B, C. When you take Calculus B, C, it essentially covers everything in A, B plus B, C. 
And that's really essentially two of the highest level math classes taught in one year. The mass, the vast majority of our students are better served if they want to get to Cal BC if they have a full year of AB. It also allows that BC year to focus on a full year of BC. So we're breaking some content up and trying to allow uh, a better opportunity for engagement. Likewise, physics. AP Physics C, the students used to have to prepare all year in a very challenging science course for two AP tests. And we believe they'll be better served if in AP Physics C, they simply prepare for the mechanics test, not the electricity and magnetism. And last, uh, macro and microeconomics. To take two very difficult courses in one year overwhelms our students and takes what is uh, an extremely relevant uh, subject of course for many of our students and what they want to major in college, we're pleased to be uh, offering them every other year. So next year we will, we will offer AP Macroeconomics, the following year Micro, etc. And students can study that course for 10 months rather than five. I want to thank Mr. Diodino and the English teachers we have embraced the idea of student choice when it comes to reading. It's a pretty common uh, basic concept. Students will become lifelong readers, or they're more likely to, if they're able to read things they're interested in and they're given some choice and some uh, ownership of what they read. So our 12th grade English classes are genre-based and students have the option to choose what type of literature um, they wish to study. Internships, Mrs. Anderson, I know this is a, a passionate uh, topic for you. I want to thank Ms. Cra uh, Kristen Jackie Dean, who came up with the idea of taking sort of the teacher's assistant that we've had for many years and just ramping up the expectations and allowing um, an intern for a teacher or for a program. This year, there are 15 students at High Point that are doing internal internships. Them with a course or with a teacher in an academic area where they might be doing research projects that helps what the course is studying. We have a student who's working with Mr. Meyer, with Mr. Yardley, um, and these are meaningful, relevant experiences. Next year, Mr. Dexter is going to offer a um, sports and information, information management internship. We hope that two or three students will take him up on that. And we're using the talent in-house to give our students exposure to you know, real-world experiences. Last, we're very pleased that um, Tri-County Behavioral Supports is here. It's on site. There's an office and a guidance counselor. Right now, they're counseling our students on Thursdays. They'll soon be moving to a second day, and we hope eventually a third and a fourth day. So to have licensed professional psychotherapy available here, separate from high point, but being delivered to our students on site is something that, um, that we're quite pleased about. So any questions on that? I love that internship thing. That's brilliant. Yeah. Okay, thanks, folks. Mr. Camp, uh, yes. uh, the question on the AT classes, dividing them up. Yeah. If you have that exceptional student, can, can they still take uh, Absolutely. two of them no doubt. together? Um, some they can. So the, there are some students who will be able to skip Cal right to BC because they're uh, exceptional. We're talking about three or four students a year right. uh, at most. Um, AP macro and micro, yes, because we offer essentially any course through our uh, online edusphere provider. So an ambitious student could take AP Macro in seat for the full year, and then simultaneously uh, do AP Micro through our online provider, uh, which, which some students do. And we're also increasingly working with SCCC to provide an access to afternoon classes on their campus. So, okay, that's good, great. I do have some concerns about the science classes going from six credits to five credits yes. and, you know, 
I know that some of the science teachers were trained with the experiential aspects of it this summer. So I just um, would hope that they that you look at that and maybe get some feedback from the science teachers this, uh, over the coming year and uh, see how that's actually going. Because again, it seems like it's for logistical reasons, and I just would like to make sure that the kids are getting the experiential. Mm -hmm. I would say that last year is a bit of a um, uh, anomaly, and that this year will be more opportunity to pursue it. I think this time next year we'll be in a position to decide whether or not this is something that is part of our long-term vision, um, or whether we want to return to an extended period. Right. And we, and we thank the science teachers for their patience as we try and give it um, a fair look. Okay, great. Should I also think that the math construction and manufacturing is a really important uh, everyday use thing that is going to be very helpful. I think they'll feel a sense of relevancy when they're in the shop and they're working on a wood um, or biotechnology and they're applying math to um, growing tomatoes or, you know, building a fence. One, one comment on the behavioral health, uh, our decision to bring somebody um, in house. Uh, I think that it was a day or maybe two later that the uh, U.S. Department of Education Secretary uh, Cardone came out with a statement, um, sort of unprecedented statement about the status, the status of um, behavioral health in, in youth and how it has been in stark decline because of the obvious situation. Um, so I think it just the timing of us doing that was was incredible. And hopefully students aren't afraid to take advantage of it. And we yeah, for exactly hope for us built this uh, next time we meet we're at the two days and then four days, etc. Also next time we meet I'm very excited that um, Ms. Courtney Delaney our director of people Health personnel services will be here to talk about the incredible things that she's doing with our uh, special education transition program. Um, I met with her today. Um, so Tommy meets with her all the time. Uh, she's an incredible asset and her vision for transition services and what she'll be doing this year. And, and it's her first year and she already has plans to implement things and she'll be here next month to tell you about that. So about the behavior health, just going back to that. Where is that office in the building? Uh, we put a lot of thought into where to host it, and the decision was to use one of the available offices in guidance. The sense was that many students go to guidance for a variety of reasons, so that it offers a sense of uh, anonymity, that someone going to guidance isn't necessarily going in for any one reason, and so far it seems to be working. And how do students Sure, thank you. Uh, students or parents um, contact Tri County directly. So, our guidance department can give students and can give parents um, that information, and then they reach out directly. We try and keep that separate um, so that we uh, come into contact with the student who's in need. We reach out to the parent, the parent reaches out to Tri County, and therefore it's really initiated to the parent. Um, we're also looking to possibly and uh, hopefully expand it to uh, availability of the staff in the future as well. Thanks. Thank you. That's it for presentations this evening. Uh, we have no other business, so we're going to proceed directly to action items. First, I have curriculum instruction and technology. And uh, I believe Ms. Smith has to leave and we can take this. So, any volunteers or otherwise, I'll take that. I'll take yeah, Go ahead, Joan. Okay. <laughs> I didn't prepare or anything. But. All right. So, um, the first three, right? Yeah, are just uh, logistical. The faculty attendance rate for November was 94.2%, student attendance was 92.4%. And um, enclosed copy of the subject report. So then we'll move items four through seven. I recommended that the board approves the harassment and intimidation bullying report for the period of November 16th to the 21st, December 21st. I 
Number five is the recommendation that we approve the co curricular field trips and co curricular field trips listed as uh, listed. Uh, number six, that it's recommended that we approve the professional development activities as listed. And number seven, that we approve the 2022-2023 uh, program of study uh, on the attachment A7 that Mr. Campbell just went through. Speaking of, of making second. a motion, seeking a second. Second. Any discussion? Roll calls. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Ms. Nugent? Yes. Ms. Schumann? Yes. Mr. Carraza? Yes. Mr. Donuts? Yes. Mr. Klein? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. All motions carry. Moving on to personnel. I'd like to move items one through four together. One is an extended sick FMLA leave of absence. One, two, one and two are. Number three is accepted to regret the retirement notification from Michelle Scarza, treasurer school money. And number four is an, another extended six, uh, FMLA. Making a motion, seeking a second. Second. Discussion? Uh, I just want to recognize our retiring treasurer school money. Uh, he has been with us. I don't even know if I could put a number on the year. It's certainly longer than I've been on the board. Um, I wish, wish her the best in her retirement. Call. Mr. Klein? Yes. Mr. Dona? Yes. Mr. Carraza? Yes. Mr. Schumann? Yes. Ms. Nugent? Yes. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. All motions carried. I'd like to move items uh, five and six. No, five is the board approves. Mr. Michael Shalier as interim assistant principal, the remainder of the 2021 2022 school year. Um, item six is approve Mrs. Heather Gonzalez to return to her tenured position of full time teacher of English for this school year. Uh, making a motion, seeking a second. Second. Discussion? I'm glad to see Mrs. Gonzalez and come back full time. Roll call. Ms. Dona? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Schumann? Yes. Mr. Klein? Yes. Mr. Carraza? Yes. Ms. Nugent? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, and I'd like to move items seven through ten. We've got on the agenda. Seven through eleven. Mm -hmm. Item seven is teachers listed for uh, six period assignments. Eight, approve a, a position of a part time nurse's aide for an out of district placement. Finally, nine. Nine, uh, to approve the resignation of employee number 1164, effective Monday, December 20th. Ten is to approve the following six period assignments listed below. And 11 is to approve the position of temporary full time secretaries for uh, uh, Ms. Leanne Reed. Is that for the two, two, two areas, Scott? The, is that the dual or no? Like, anyway. Second, I'm sorry. Okay, it's number 11. Um, it is in multiple positions, as we, it's one position. It's administrative assistant secretary, but there will be multiple areas where they will be uh, utilized. Okay. okay, so making a motion, seeking a second. 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 Discussion? A roll call. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Schumann? Yes. Mr. Carraza? Yes. Mr. Dona? Yes. Mr. Klein? Yes. Nugent? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. All motions carried. Next uh, action item is the next for Thursday. 
Oh, right. <laughs> um, item one has been stricken, but, but I will move items two through seven. Yes. Separate? I'm going to get them with it. You're right. Uh, let's do two through nine. So there's two on the agenda all the way at the back. Uh, number two, recommended to the board approve Aaron Baker as head ski coach. Number three, recommended that the board approve Henry Cardinal as volunteer ski coach for 2021-22 school year. Number four, recommended that the board approves Kate Finnegan as volunteer girls lacrosse coach for 21-22 school year. Number five, it is recommended that the board approves the creation of the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Club with Ms. Sherry Wesa serving as volunteer advisor. Um, number six, it is recommended that the board approves the Wildcat Best Buddies Club, which will be affiliated with the international organization Best Buddies. So to broaden our network and receive greater resources for this important work. The Wildcat Best Buddies Club will be an opportunity for high point students with and without disabilities to engage in social activities and build an inclusive school culture. The Best Buddies Club will meet weekly during unit lunch in room 120 under the advisement and assistance of Mrs. Delaney, Mrs. Whalen, and Ms. Smetana. Wildcat Best Buddies will be affiliated with Best Buddies as an opportunity to receive greater resources and broaden our network for this important work. The registration free is $350. Number seven is recommended the board approve Rivalry Sports Medicine Highland Lakes as a provider of substitute athletic trainers for the 21-22 school year. Substitute athletic trainers, should they be needed, will be paid $50 per hour with a three hour minimum if the coverage is requested with less than 24 hours. Notice the cost will increase to $55 per hour. And all of them have the appropriate certification. And then turning to the addendum. And number eight is recommended that the super it is recommended that the board approves Lorelai Castellani as a volunteer girls basketball coach for the 21-22 school year. And number nine is recommended that the board approves Ben Kapler as a volunteer wrestling coach for the 21-22 school year. Making a motion on all of those, seeking a second. Second. Any discussion? Yeah. I think it's it's worth noting how many volunteer coaches, um, people that have stepped forward that want to see programs continue um, so much so that that they're able to give they're willing to give their free time um, to have those programs continue. And, and I think it, you know worth recognizing that at least a couple of them are recent graduates. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if I'm not correct, Ms. Castellani was a star basketball player here a few years back. Recent graduate also, she's very recent. Oh, I see. <laughs> um, but regardless, if you're a volunteer and you're helping continue um, a program here at High Point, kudos to you. Um, also, number six. Um, Distracted for a minute, I'm sorry, but um, there's another program being brought in by uh, Ms. Delaney for our uh, students, which is uh, exceptional. I did not have the opportunity to speak with that committee. Sorry. And if I did, no, I don't uh, <laughs> that's, that's buddies with the uh, Kennedy Schreiber Foundation. I, it, I believe so. Special Olympics, I believe they're yes. a branch of that. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Anybody else? Roll call, please. Mr. Klein? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Carraza? Yes. Mr. Schumann? Yes. Ms. Dodona? Yes. Ms. Nugent? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. All motions carry. We have no policy items on the agenda this evening, nor do we have any negotiation items. And I believe we've already covered the building and grounds. Mm -hmm. That brings us to finance. There's one oh. thing on the building and grounds. Did I miss it? We moved it. We moved Did it, it earlier. Oh, no, he wants to make it. Oh, 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 sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anybody would like to make any comments? <laughs> so, comments. If everyone knows that the tank is um, installed and working. The old tank is supposed to be removed on the 27th. Pull it break. And there's no frost on the ground right now. So, 
weather looks like it's going to hold. So hopefully, this happens and we get that out of the ground. Great. That would be good news. How about you, Jenny? Very good. Yeah. You are. <laughs> Are sliding right in there seamlessly, let me tell you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Cohen. <laughs> then, without ado, we'll move on to finance. Uh, let me move items uh, one through five together. One is a recommendation to accept the report of the board secretary of business administrator for the month of 20, uh, November 2021. Recommendation to accept the report of the treasurer for the month of November 2021. And three is a recommendation to approve the report of transfer to the minimum expense transfer account for the month of November 2021. Four is a recommendation to approve for payment the attached schedule of audited bills dated December 22nd, 2021. Five is a recommendation to accept the adult education agency account, athletic account, cafeteria account, principal's petty cash account, scholarship account, school store account, and student activities account for the month of November 2021. I'll make that motion. Taking a second. Second. Any discussion on item 25? Huh? Roll call. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Newman? Yes. Ms. Nugent? Yes. yes. Mr. Klein? Yes. Mr. Donner? Yes. Mr. Peraza? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. All motion carried. And I will move the final item six and seven together. Item six is a recommendation to approve the authorized execution of the following tuition contract between High Point Regional High School as ascending and the following districts and related, related information I've listed. Item seven is a recommendation to approve two three day workshops on student wellness, empathy, respect, and self awareness conducted by Brian Thomas for grades nine and 10. The one day follow up assembly for each grade. So that's eight days in total uh, for a total of $5,700 on mutually agreed upon as not yet determined dates in January or February 2022. These workshops will be funded by federal grant monies formally accepted, formerly accepted by the BOE for the purpose of enhancing and supporting student social and emotional learning. Make the motion on six and seven. Okay, second. Second. Any discussion? Oh. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Ms. Nugent? Yes. Mrs. Juven? Yes. Mr. Peraza? Yes. Mr. Dona? Yes. Mr. Klein? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Motion carried. And transportation. Peraza, action items. We're going to move items one through 11 Whoa. together. Yes. Number one is recommended we approve and authorize the contract for the transportation of students to school activities as listed. Item two, that the board approve and authorize contract addendum for additional mileage for this school year as listed. Item three is that the board approve and authorize a quoted contract for transportation for this year as listed. Item four, Board approve and authorize the joint transportation agreement for the current school year as listed. Item five is that the board approve and authorize a joint transportation agreement for this current school year as listed. Item six, the board approve and authorize the joint transportation agreement for the current school year as listed. Item seven, that the board approve and authorize another joint transportation agreement for the current school year as listed. Number eight. Board approve and authorize the quoted contract for school related activity trips for the current school year as listed. Number nine, that the board approve and authorize another joint transportation agreement for school related activities as listed. Number 10, that the board approve and authorize a joint transportation agreement for the current school year as listed. Number 11, that the board approve and authorize the quoted contracts for trips for the current school year as listed. Excuse me, that was number 11. Thank you. Motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? My discussion is that you should make sure that he's the uh, chair of the committee <laughs> next year because I've never seen him out through those readings so wonderfully. You're going to make me blush. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Other than Ms. Anderson's flattering, are there any other <laughs> comments? Amazing. Roll call, Amazing. please. Mr. Klein? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Schumann? Yes. Ms. Nugent? Yes. 
Mr. Bowman? Yes. Mr. Carraza? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. All motions carried. That is our action items for the evening. I just don't believe we have any correspondence. Uh, under miscellaneous, our standing items about school board mandated training. This applies to you, you know about it. If not, then. If there's any problems with accessing any training, please let me know and we will get assistance from the all famous Billy at New Jersey School Board of D3. Thank you. Uh, so we um, will now open up for the second public comment section of the evening. The same uh, rules apply as the first session. Um, please, uh, if you're in person here, stand, uh, come to the podium. Uh, you'll have three minutes to address the board, which will be timed by myself. Uh, limited section to no longer than 45 minutes. Please be respectful and mindful that your comments are being reported. And, uh, again, we have an opportunity to present uh, to speak to the board either in person or virtually. We'll pull uh, both areas. Is anybody present? Okay. I've made yeah. this for if you, if you don't mind, because I have a few things in here that I just want to go over with you. Not all of it. Sure. It's plenty for you to read. For your holiday season. Do we have your name in? Yes, I know. My name is Jane of Arts. Sorry, you read this one? I'm skip you because I know you can do that. You can do that? Yes. Yeah. And I'm, I'm actually two more board members. I realize that there's only nine. So, oh, I see. Okay. And I can share one. Okay, and we have Okay, great. Thanks. I don't know if we got you. That's all right. Do I need to see? Jane of Arts. Jane of Arts. Union Avenue, Sussex. B A R T S. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 It's nice to be able to be in attendance. So thank you. Um, okay, um, as you can see, I've given plenty of coverage here in the beginning for the dossier. Uh, David Martin, uh, 22 years of studying, has put all of this information together. So if we could skip to page 25, and um, you can see uh, we have the Title for Section 21, um, Title, I don't know how to read that, 50424, Illegal Clinical Trial, Unlawful to Conduct, uh, Unlawful to Conduct Medical Research in the Case of an Emergency Without a Series of Steps Taken to Establish the Research with Duly Authorized and Independent Institutional Report, Review Board, Secure Informed Consent of All Participants, including a Statement of Risk and Benefits, and engage in consultation with a community in which the studies be conducted. And we all know that we're under this emergency in the study. And if you scroll down, you can read about the face mask. Should not be worn by healthy individuals. We all know what it's doing to the students. It's hard for me as a person that can't hear very well. I'm normally used to reading lips. So um, you can skip on down and see the social distancing. And then you read, um, basically, you go to the next page and it is unlawful under the FTC Act, Title 15 U.S. Code 41, to advertise that a product or a service can prevent, treat, or cure a disease. So let's get to the next page. And you can see, um, it should say the um, High Point Regional. Do you see that? Next page after 26, yes. okay. Um, this is another uh, two codes that have been violated. Um, and again, I don't think that any of you really want um, any kind of possible felonies that, that you've got U.S. Code Title or Title 18, U.S. Code 241 and 242, conspiracy against rights and deprivation of rights under color law. Okay, read through that. And you can see after that, a couple of pages, or you'll see a VAERS report that has to do with actual. This has to do with the teenagers, the children, because 
of the myocarditis and things that are happening in the boys. The, there's a lot of nervous central um, debilitations. There's just been a whole lot of stuff, uh, reproductive issues with girls and boys. Um, if you pass back there, you'll see there's a letter written to the president that this has been three years that has been unanswered. There's 11 questions that have been pending and it's never been answered and it was rewritten again and we're still waiting and somebody else can send it. As far as what's behind there, there's also another letter by a Thomas Renz, that's an attorney that has put this letter together to whom it may concern that you can send to your Congress, your attorney generals, and anybody that's in the, um, I guess the government that could do some good maybe for us here and you would sign your name to that. And behind that is, <clears throat> from David Martin that you see the dossier from, he wrote a short five page piece that you can send to your attorney general as well, send it certified, and um, you can see the felony charges, and you can see all the defendants' names, and that being said, the reason why I'm doing this, I don't want to be a bummer, I know it's the holiday, I'm concerned about our kids, I know all of us would like for this to be over and done with, but there's um, a lot of things happening that honestly shouldn't be happening. And, you know, I don't think anybody here wants to be involved in some of these felonies that if you're going along with it, you're, you're involved in just the same. And it's a felony. And I don't think any of you want, you can, you can, you know, get out of it. You can just say no and uh, repent. So that being said, uh, I appreciate it again. I, I just really, I have a hard time with trying to see our children and all the emotional stress that they're going through. The, the masks are really making a huge issue on our children. They can't see expression. They can't hear very well. They can't understand well the emotions. It, as you can see, I, I watched my grandson go through this and he's 14 and I've seen the biggest change in him in this past year that I don't even know this child hardly anymore. He is so set back. So anyway, happy holidays. <laughs> Merry Christmas, happy new year. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Charlie, do we have to have anybody virtual? that would like to make a comment. If, uh, if you are listening virtually, please raise your virtual hand, we'll recognize you. It doesn't look like there's anybody else in the person here. And I have a uh, motion to close the second public comment section. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, now I have our non committee board member reports or comments. Anyone? Well, I know Leanne was going to um, say something, but she had to go in emergency. So I'm sure I'm not, will, will not be as eloquent as her. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, uh, we as a board, um, you know, really want the children to be in school. And we want uh, to express that we believe that uh, the best protection for the children to be in school, the best way for them to be in school is to uh, be vaccinated in order that they will not have to quarantine and so that they can also have less risk of having serious illnesses and further consequences. And I, for one, as a teacher, have experienced also that the masks help protect the children. I've seen students get sick and then quarantine and the close contacts that are from the classroom are not the ones getting sick because they're wearing their masks properly. It's the close contacts that they have outside of the classroom where they are exposed to somebody without a mask on where they then become sick. And I've seen that repeatedly in the district that I teach in. And so, we're looking to keep the children in school as much as possible, but also to protect them. Yes. 
I, I agree. I concur. We've been talking about that, that we want to encourage our students to be vaccinated. As, as a board, we want to encourage that to be the case because that is how we keep these kids in the building, moving forward emotionally, intellectually. That's, that's how they're going to get through this horrific time we're in. And the kids are having a bad time of it. I, I agree with you. Being in the building helps them. And being in the building is mostly possible when they don't have the quarantine. And that's what we're looking for. So that's what this board has been discussing and, and wanting to say publicly. Yeah, um, we are committed to keeping this school open for students uh, in any way we can, provided that we're not prohibited from doing so. I believe I'm really feeling the same that as a couple board members have already said, we want the students here. We do, we do not want to go to a virtual learning environment again. Um, and a number of us feel that it's worth mentioning that one of the best ways to get there is to increase the level of vaccination in our community. Any other comments? Doesn't have to be on this topic. I would just uh, to to I guess support what's being said regarding what we've done here in response to the, the guidelines that we've received from the state. Um, we're we've reduced the number of days for um, for quarantining for those who are not vaccinated based upon the guidelines that we have received recently. They've been updated because we believe that children are better served by being in school. We believe that the harm done to students is greater for them to be uh, removed from the school setting than uh, that which they might suffer should they become uh, a positive case. We're also um, seriously considering and moving in the direction of what's referred to as test to stay. That means uh, anyone who is not vaccinated and who is determined to be a close contact can uh, take take a uh, on-site test on day one, three, and five. It could be one, three, four, and five. It's one, and if they're all negative tests, they do not have to quarantine. This is a movement in New Jersey where several uh, districts throughout the state, at the uh, suggestion and. Uh, <clears throat> of the CDC who has stated that that's an appropriate measure and the, uh, and the state has also discussed it. So we're likely moving in that direction so as to ensure that we have more kids on site. Our goal, our purpose is for kids to be in school. Uh, it has been a disastrous 20 months and we, the administration, the staff, the teachers, the community have paid a high price and our students have suffered immeasurably and that is grievous heartbreaking and i do not want nor does the board want nor does anyone want children to suffer law any further loss of their childhood that we all took for granted good bad or otherwise and so we want our kids here we want them here engaging in their own learning with their teachers in front of them with their classmates and friends and colleagues and peers we want them engaging in extracurricular activities that they enjoy. We want them engaging in athletics. <clears throat> we want them here. Now, having said that, that's going to be a challenge. It does not mean that students will not need to go um, to quarantine if they do become positive. However, our focus this year is social emotional learning. It is not to measure student growth as if it were 19 or 2019. I'm not mitigating our responsibility to provide academic instruction and to enable students to, to learn, but we must recognize that our primary focus is social and emotional learning, and that happens when kids are here around their peers, in front of their teachers, and that happens in the building. And so um, unless there are uh, dire circumstances or we are uh, mandated, it is highly unlikely for us to uh, take the step to want to close because we believe in the efficacy of children being on site. Uh, they've lost too much. 
That does not mean I'm uh, I'm denying uh, the the issues that are that we've contended with, but it does acknowledge that our responsibility is those 14 to 21 now 22 year olds who need us to ensure that they are not um, harmed further, and uh, that is our purpose, and we will do everything we can to ensure that we remain open. Also. We will do everything we can to ensure that our athletic events indoors for the winter remain open to spectators. One of the great joys of my life has been watching my children participate in extracurricular activities and athletics. It, 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 very emotional. When that's denied of a kid or a parent, we're gonna keep our gym open for parents and for spectators. Doesn't mean we're gonna be cavalier, we're still gonna maintain uh, certain rules, but to deny further those opportunities that we enjoy as kids, to deny that any further, we believe, I believe, will do more harm to kids than keeping them out to keep them safe from, whether it's Omicron or Pi, which I hear is the next one, uh, that's coming, and I'm not pleased. I'm not in any way mitigating. I'm completely apolitical. What I'm saying is our responsibility is 14 to 22 year olds, and we're going to serve their needs. Thank you. Any comments on anything else? If I may just take a minute or two to recap. Um, given that this is the last meeting of the calendar year, our board composition is going to be changing uh, going into our January rework. Just want to recognize the, uh, some of the accomplishments that this board has uh, managed over the past 12 difficult months. Um, we have uh, negotiations committee has managed to uh, reach um, Agreement, in some cases, full contract uh, agreements with the superintendent and the HBEA. Uh, the HBEA is yet to be ratified by uh, by the association and will eventually be uh, up on the board agenda here also. But uh, we had we have reached a, a verbal tentative agreement. Uh, that those two alone are no small tasks. And, um, well, it was the negotiations committee that was heavily involved in that. It didn't require involvement by the entire board. Um, there were a number of um, curricular um, movements this year that look, it's been a, a moving situation with, with instruction during the world of COVID. And um, kudos to the curriculum committee for managing those changes, working with the administration uh, to move all of those. Um, personnel and policy, <laughs> we've had uh, some retirements, we've had other, uh, what, what is typical in, in the corporate world world is, is turnover. Um, it is probably highlighted in, in the time of COVID, um, but it it's one of the things that Personnel Policy Committee would like to, uh, to recognize for their support of uh, the administration through all of those changes. Um, Buildings and Grounds Committee has been heavily involved in one particular project that I am glad to hear reported is nearing its completion. And that is no small task. And I know we're fortunate to have uh, some individuals here that are very capable in, in overseeing that project too, but it's been the one I know has been on the building and grounds radar for quite some time. Um, transportation. Listen, those action items are not fun to go through. <laughs> and, but beyond that, I, I want to recognize the transportation committee for working so well with our transportation coordinator, who uh, I think Surprised we've recognized her at a number of uh, instances throughout the year, and how fortunate we are to have um, the, the 
coordination that is necessary to provide transportation in an area of the state where we stretch so far and our transportation costs, I would warrant our <laughs> part of our budget and much more than you'll find in just about any other super urban area of the state. Um, committee's my missing. Finance. Finance. Like, well, the only thing I'd like to mention on finance uh, was related to the, the comprehensive report. I think, again, uh, a final kudos to uh, our board secretary, business administrator, and our staff in the office for keeping the I's dotted and the T's crossed and coming up with a report. It's the first one in my recent memory where we've had no recommendations. Usually we're quite good compared to some of our peers. And I've looked at some of the peer reports. Um, this one is outstanding to know that there was no recommendations. So um, thank you for that. Um, and, a, and a thank you to Dr. Ripley for what uh, you and your fellow administrators have had to go through this again another difficult year we are we are hoping that the difficult years very soon come to an end and we can go back to education more as we remember it more as it's envisioned to be um but you know it's a it's a great way for us to wrap up this year 21. i for one i'm looking forward to moving into next year and or with some other things and i certainly wish our two departing board members the best departing right you said that departing. i think so. <laughs> i wanted to say that wayne you took you took the reins in march was it no i'm not january yeah it's january oh january so it was march the year before so your second year was yeah. Come on. Yeah. Well, no, I, I oh, okay. All right, I'm with you now. I'm with you. I'm glad. I just want to say, for some reason, I thought I used to go over when Bill left, but no, you have done a marvelous job guiding us, leading us, working with everybody, making the connections with everybody. You have done a great job. And where we used to just be complaining that we were getting state cuts, that we don't even talk about that anymore because there's so many other things that we're working through. And you have done a wonderful job leading us from whenever the heck you became president. So it was good. Thank you. And Wayne, your, your work on the negotiation, the spreadsheets on those lovely fluff charts and everything. <laughs> I'm impressed. It took a lot of time. I so, that be, thank you. <laughs> well, with that, do we have uh, other, there's one other, other business, um, just uh, for the purpose of public disclosure. We include um, a record of our Open Public Records Act requests. Uh, we received one that uh, was responded to over the past month, and that was all purchase orders from May 21st through November 20. Uh, excuse me, May 2021 through November 20, uh, 22nd, 2021, uh, from Smart Procure. That is as listed. So with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn our last meeting of the uh, calendar year. Sorry. I think it should be the latest. So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> on, on the record, I believe that. Was, <laughs> there we go. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Yeah.